There are over 10 million stories in the Naked City and maybe 30 million pigeons, I think. But I have never even seen a sparrow in Manhattan, Tess. Forget the sparrow, it's a metaphor. If you want to do good in this job, you got to stop being so literal. I know what a metaphor is. This is a metaphor. That is an artichoke. I bought it in a market down there on the street, and the little man said that it has a heart inside that is so fragile and so delicious, it's worth all the trouble to get to it. What have I told you about taking human form and then starting on the food? You just stay away from these little men and their metaphors. But you just said. I know what I just said, but sometimes I don't think you have the sense God gave the goat. What's the matter, Tess? You're not yourself. Well, I got a new assignment for you, and it's its not like anything you've ever done before. This is my new assignment, but I, I can't... Answer this ad. Tabloid magazine test? <laughs> Your mail is delivered by aliens? Boy sees through ear? <laughs> what? So this Miss Martin needs an angel, huh? There are one million journalists in the Naked City, and they need a little faith, too. Well, what if they don't know that they do? Well, I know a lot of people who don't believe in angels, but I've never met a soul that didn't want to believe in them. This Miss Martin, she didn't have to run this ad. She could have made up something about angels like the rest of them do. But somewhere deep inside, she wants something better. She wants the truth. Think of her as an artichoke. <laughs> so which one is it? There. Two over and four down. She's the editor of the weekly. Watch out. She's a handful. I don't know. It was always a risky shot. Why don't we just use what we've got? I mean, there's some crazy stuff here. All right, listen to this. Dear Ms. Martin, I've been channeling an angel named Owen for six years, and he just left me for a girl named Sue. All right. Sirs, I've enclosed a copy of my book, How to Download Your Angel After 40. To whom it may concern, an angel changed my oil on the Taconic Parkway. <laughs> but there's no proof. Since when do we need proof? We're missing the hook here, Chris. I mean, you can get anybody to say they've seen a miracle, but to prove one, now there's a story. Hello, Miss Martin. H how did you get in here? Do you have an appointment? Well, I came about the ad. Oh, let me guess. You've had some sort of angel experience? Well, I am an angel experience. I am an angel. You're an angel? Yes. Well, thanks for coming in, really. But we're axing the story. Uh, how long have you been an angel? Forever. Let's narrow it down. Was it before or after you were captured by Elvis clones? Why don't I just tell you my story? And by the time I'm finished, I promise, you will believe. What are you doing for lunch? I heard about this great big place down on 57th Street. Back in an hour, Chris. Uh, no, no. What? This is just the hook I've been looking for. A real nut. All right. Full name and where do you live? Monica. Everywhere. Let's get the ground rules down. I'm looking for facts. I need solid proof here, like wings. Do you got any wings you carry around or something? I don't think you're ready for those. Anyway, this is not about proof. This is about faith. Faith doesn't sell. I need evidence, something the readers can see. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Yeah, okay. Um, why don't you start talking and we'll see how it goes, hmm? Okay. Um, well, my name is Monica, and I've always been an angel. Although I've only been a caseworker for a year, which isn't very long, as you can imagine, in the scope of eternity, so I'm still learning. Yeah, well, wait. Back up. A caseworker? Well, I started out in the choir. 
But then, of course, everybody does. And then I spent a little while in special appearances, you know, Behold, and so on and so forth. But that didn't last too long, and then I got transferred over to Search and Rescue. You know, zoom, push the train back on the track, zoom, you're out of there. It was all very exciting, of course, but uh, I never got to spend more than a few seconds at a time on Earth. Well, there were centuries of little bits and pieces of life-saving, but nothing you could really get your teeth into. And then Tess, well, she's my supervisor. Well, actually, she's really more of my friend. She thought that I would make a great caseworker. I mean, saving lives has its merits, but saving souls and, and futures and families, that's something else altogether. I think I've really found my niche. Did you ever wonder why some foods are free and some you have to pay for? No. Go on about being a caseworker. Tell me about a typical case. Well, I mean, that's all very confidential, you know. High-level stuff. Well, about eight months ago, I was watching this young man, Andy. He was climbing up the side of a rock face with his friends. No help, no ropes. To begin with, I thought that Andy was my assignment, but lesson number one. Assume nothing. Nothing. No activity on the EEG, doctor. No blood flow to the brain on the scan. I think Andy could be an organ donor. Well, let's keep him ventilated. We're going to chem 7, LFTs, and CPKs. And notify the family, get the organ release on this stat. I found a donor card in his wallet. Get the family on board anyway. I want this falling apart at the last minute. Mark time. Brain death, 2.52 p.m. Let's go. Call the transplant team. This one could go septic on us easy. It's amazing how one moment can change everything. <laughs> It's like handling a filet. I just can't think of it as anything but me. Honey, your jacket's calling you. Oh, excuse me. You are so talented, Lisa. You make these gorgeous works of art, and I can hardly make a hair appointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew it. Randy Arnum just up my bid. I'm going to go stand over there and protect it. Are you staying for the banquet? I can't. I have to install a piece at the new wing at the hospital. It's going to take me all night. Well, see ya. Yeah. I got a heart. Can oh, I get good. the keys? Yep. No, don't worry about me. I'll just get a ride. There are just a few forms to be completed. Thank you. This one, it gives your consent to harvest the following organs from your husband. Andy signed his donor card just last week. He's um, always thinking of everybody else. He was. He, he's not dead, really, is he? He's only been kept alive by machines. But maybe if we waited, he could come back in a month, couldn't he? I mean, miracles happen, don't they? Yes, they do. But the real miracle here is that Andy's death will help save many other lives. And that's something that you can always be proud of. Dr. Lanigan, Dr. Lanigan, what we got, Rams? A uh, 24-year-old male, massive hematoma. We went in, but we found a closed head injury with severe brain swelling, so it was no good. We've had him on respirator since three. Timing's perfect. I was just about to order a margarita. So we've got the liver and lungs going out to St. Agnes. That one kidney we lost, but the other one flies up to Albany. I mean, they're flipping out up there. We're going to lose their boy in 24 hours. The harvest is set for seven tonight. Once the paperwork gets done, the heart's all yours. I'm passing. You're receiving. Recipient? A 30-year-old male, stage two. He's been waiting for a match for two years, and this one's perfect. He's, um, he's Gus Jacobs' patient. And Gus gave him maybe a week. This is his last shot. 30, huh? Yeah, congenital heart. Mm. And the guy shouldn't even have made it this far, but I don't know, it looks like he hit the second chance express. The ambulance is bringing him in. He's at home? Yeah, Gus sent him home to die. And who knew? Donor family? Married six weeks. <laughs> Mountain climbing. He was climbing solo, unroped. Mm. She hasn't signed yet. Excuse me, I'm Dr. Pacherik. I'm the uh, surgeon who's going to be supervising the procedure. I just wanted to tell you that I understand what a terrible loss this is for you. 
and to assure you that your husband will be treated with all the care and respect he deserves. Let them know the ones that took. Just tell them how much we love him. He had a very good, kind heart. I promise. There's our winner. I'll get him processed. Yeah. Hello, Doctor. I'm the transplant coordinator. Never seen you before. Well, they like to rotate the coordinators. It keeps us objective. I'm really glad we found the perfect match for you. Great. So, um... Monica. Monica. That kid's organs could go bad any minute. I got a recipient in here who's not gonna see Tuesday if I don't get that paperwork signed. Now. Well, she just needed a little time. I mean, she is going to sign. It's just that sometimes... I know. Just do it, okay? Let's change them over. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Whoa. Dr. Lanigan. He's steady, alert, excited, and we're just in time. Oh, there's this cardiologist. Have you met Gus yet? She's the one from Memorial. She took uh, Jack Caldwell's chair. That's Gus. Augusta. Papers are signed. Everything's in order. Just need your signature. Good Gus, this is Joe Pacherik. Hi. Heard a lot about you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just pulled the engine out of my 63 Merc. You know, I used that volcano stuff, but I think an extra hour of scrub ought to do it. You're scrubbing? I hope you don't mind if I sit in, but Ethan's a special patient of mine. Ethan? Interesting guy. He's had more than his share of problems besides this heart stuff, and I'll tell you, he's overdue for some good news. He's a good guy. Thomas, Ethan, and Parker. Everybody calls him Ethan. Oh, my God. I didn't see that, Joe. Get yourself another surgeon. Ethan Parker murdered Joe's children. Wait a minute. A surgeon refuses to do a transplant on the guy who murdered his kids? How come I've never heard about this? Uh, may I take your order? Yeah, a club sandwich and an iced tea. I'll have a, uh, an artichoke and a double decaf mocha latte with a spoon and, oh, you know, those little bowls with the sauce to dip it in? The spoon? The artichoke. Yeah, the spoon's for the uh, double decaf the mocha latte. On an okay, I got that. Uh, I'm down here at uh, Roy Lance's on, on 57th Street. Yeah. Can you give me some backup on this? I mean, any litigation pending? There's got to be some sort of lawsuit out there. But we had a deal here. I mean, you can't get sidetracked with facts. See, I knew this was going to be a difficult assignment. The moment I realized that Ethan had only seven hours to live. Wait a minute. The doctor said he had a week. He didn't. He had seven hours. And I knew that the moment I saw Henry. Henry? The angel of death. The angel of death? <laughs> you make him sound so grim. No, those guys are real sweethearts. Guys, plural. Well, it takes a lot of angels like Henry to cover it all. You see them all the time. Well, I do. Oh my God, I never made the connection. But he didn't murder them. It was an accident, right? The guy was driving drunk and plowed into five kids. That's murder. You know, I knew that Ethan spent a couple years in jail for truck and driving, but I never put the two together. Oh, God. You know, guess what, Ethan? Oh, you know, the good news is we finally found you a new heart. The bad news is your surgeon doesn't want to do it because you ran over his kids. What am I going to tell him? Have you ever come across anything like this before? In one form or another. No. I suppose there's always the long shot chance we'll get another heart the next week. But another perfect match? Well, let's not count on it. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Henry. Monica, just when things start getting predictable, voila. Voila. That's all you learned after a century in France? Well, that and a, a glass of red wine a day keeps the angel of death away. That for a while. Is 
Ethan. Yeah, I thought I'd get here a little early, get him used to the idea. You know, it's always harder in hospitals, making it something special. How much time do I have? Um, well, unless you think of something, it won't be gone by midnight. Look, it's no problem, buddy. And I don't blame you for a second. If I could do it for you myself, I would. Frankly, I'm glad I don't know how. What about Phil Stalter? The whole red team had the weekend. Now, he said something about taking his kids to the Berkshires. And we could stall the harvest an hour, maybe, if he left now. I'm on it. I'll find him. Don't worry. Okay, pal. Be over in just a minute, all right? Well, you said that hours ago. I know. You said when it snowed, we could go sledding as soon as it snowed. Okay, okay. Right there. Go, go, come on. Go to the hoop. Joe, are you going to take them or not? Yeah, yeah, honey. They're in overtime. Can't be much longer. Ten minutes time. Oh, okay. come on. Ten minutes is forever to these guys. Let me just take them, no, all right? No, no, no. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Here I come. This is me leaving. Getting out of the chair. Ah, oh, foul, come on. That was a charge. You saw that. I saw it, sweetie. They've been waiting oh. since Christmas. You've had 24 games since okay. then, okay? I'm going to take him to the park. Come on, guys, let's go. Okay, Goodbye, sweetie. I'm right behind See you. See you later. Okay, have a good I'm time. coming. Okay, let's go. Ah, oh, jeez, let him have the lane. <sighs> hey, 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 give me that hand. Give me that hand. Mm. You have fun, bring me a snowball. Bye. Here he is. Come on, sweetie. Watch out for Wilkins. He's breaking loose. Pass to the middle. So, I uh, hope you're getting paid by the pound for this. No, actually, I'm donating this piece because my husband's a doctor here. Well, any chance you could spare a minute to give us a hand? He's doing a heart transplant. Transplants, huh? Well, I could use a new bag. Tell him I'll wait for him in the, uh, uh what is it? Atrium. He's never been in it. Come in. We haven't had much success finding another surgeon. I know you can't imagine going ahead with this, but I'm here to see it through, and I'll do anything I can to help. Weird world, huh? What are the odds of this happening? The laws of probability never seem to matter when it happens to you. I have been a prisoner of probability. Chance disappears when you make a decision. Oh, I, I made a decision a long time ago. If I ever saw that man again, I would kill him with my bare hands. This will just take a minute. Now. This is your mayo, mm -hmm. yogurt and dill, mm -hmm. curry, white wine and mustard, drawn butter and garlic. Isn't food a great perk? Well, you enjoy it while you can. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Hey, I got it. Thomas Ethan Parker, 30, served two and a half years on a DUI in Jersey. Ran over the curb about four years ago and killed five kids getting into a car in front of their house. Two and a half years? First offense. That's all I got. 
they uh, named a hospital or something after the kids. There's a picture in, that, in their in the guy's arraignment. Thanks. Sure. So I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Oh, ye of little faith. Okay, so he existed. Look at this. The guy kills five children and all he got was a bad cut on his face. You know what's missing here. Where's the headline that says this piece of scum died? I mean, how can anybody seriously consider giving him a second chance? And don't tell me that it's God's will. Why don't you let me finish my story and then you decide? Do you want to go in there, Dr. Pacheri? Um, no, I, I changed my mind. Have you seen in there? It looks more like a garden than a hospital lobby. No, no, I've, I've never been in there. Oh, come on, take a peek. No, that's all right, really. Oh, they're putting a little statue up. It's going to be real cute when they get through. Come on. No, really, it, it's OK. I don't. Never mind, I'll, I'll see you later. It seems he wanted to talk to you. He hasn't wanted to talk to me for a long time. Well, somebody should start saying something. That door swings both ways, you know. There's nothing to worry about, Ethan. It happens all the time. But it's almost 7 o'clock. Just because they said 7 o'clock doesn't mean that they're going to go in at 7 on the dot. And don't forget, we've got five surgeries to coordinate before we can harvest, and that might take a few hours. But don't you worry. You know, you're going to be right next door to that heart, and as soon as they get it out, they're going to serve it up faster than a burger and fries, honey. You can bet on it, Ethan. Tessa, I don't think I have a few hours. I can feel it. Like death is in the room. So why don't you just get a substitute surgeon? That's not the point, and you knew it. A substitute is not what he needs. You're beautiful when you're cosmic. Hi. I thought you could use this. Hello, Ethan. I'm Monica. I'm coordinating the transplant for the hospital. You've, um, got a lot to look forward to, my friend. I hope so. I'm looking for my husband. He's doing a heart transplant, Joe Pacherik. Oh, my. Oh, no. Maybe I can help you. Pacherik. Oh, no. I saw no. him on front. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ethan, it's okay. I heard. You want to say something to me? Just a word, maybe fill your quota for the year. Just been thinking. When we buried... When we buried our babies, I, uh... I stopped believing in God. Do you remember when Sylvie used to point up at the stars? She'd ask which one God lived on. You'd point at her heart. So you're the star. God lives inside you. Stop it, Lisa. Just stop that. There is no God. No, no, maybe, maybe there is. Yeah. How could I hate him so much if he didn't exist? Oh, God, that's bull. It's not God you hate. It's me. Just say it. Come on, Lisa. No, 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 no. Get it over with. Say it. 
I see it. I see it every time you look at me. When you look at me. You blame me. I couldn't wait. I had to park the car outside in the street. I should have waited. Yeah, you're damn the right. You should have waited. You should have waited. I told you I would do it. I said I would take them. I told you. Why couldn't you leave me alone for five more minutes? That's all. Five you lousy just minutes. just sat there. Why couldn't you take them when I asked you? Why couldn't you listen to your children? They never got to go sledding. They never got to go. Is that what you wanted me to say? I don't Is that know. What you I don't know! God! You want to blame me? You want me to blame you? You want to blame him? You don't care who you blame, just so long as you don't have to blame yourself. Well, I've forgiven him. And I've forgiven you and me and God and basketball and snow and everybody else that I blamed. And it's slow. But I'm starting to get my life back. And I'm going to, with or without you. You can honestly look me in the eye and tell me that you have forgiven that monster. If I don't, I'll die too. So that's it, huh? You're 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 over this. I, but well, I guess you must have because you spend every waking moment raising funds so that you can finish this damn children's wing, and the rest of the time you disappear into your studio so you can make some stupid statues of something. You think I don't know what that children's wing is? You have any idea why I can't walk into the damn thing? No. Well, that is not a memorial to our children. That is your eternal up yours to me. Oh. And you made sure that I would have to walk past it every day for the rest of my life. Well, I will. I will walk past it. But I'll be damned if I'll go inside it and pretend that I'm over this. Ah. Lisa, the, the, the truth is that a minute this way or that way, well, what is the difference? And you could have gone, or I could have gone. The thing is that he got into his car, and he, he is the one. And he should have died a long time ago. Don't come home until you've forgiven that man in there. And yourself. And God. Basketball. And snow. Where have you been? Where's Stolter? He's up in Tanglewood at a concert. We paged him, it's no answer. Doesn't Griffin Memorial have a transplant team? We don't have enough time. And we gotta harvest now, because those other organs have places they gotta go tonight. And we can't keep that heart on ice forever. You face it, Joe, this is the right heart at the right time for the right match. And... What? Ethan Parker's losing it. And he's going down a lot faster than Gus expected. He found out about you. It's getting late. I gotta harvest. Look, going up to OR. Now, as soon as I close, I'll come over there and I'll back you up, all right? Just, just turn it all off, pal. And you gotta pull this one off, because nobody is gonna believe it's a mistake if that guy buys. You'll lose everything. I already have. You don't... 
you could lose your license. But he's Dr. not Patterson, working. Patterson, there's a phone call for you. Always had this heart thing. Ever since I was born, it's like always living on the edge. Nobody thought I would make it to 12, then 15, 20. When I made it to 25, I thought I had it beat. The day after my birthday, they said, no way, I would be lucky to make it to dinner, let alone 30. So I kind of went crazy. I started drinking. It was the only thing that kept me going. I don't care. I just want you to know. Whatever life I had, I lost that day anyway. I'm not really sure why I'm still alive. Or why I've been given this chance. But I want you to know I'm gonna use it. Try and make a difference. But if something happens on that table tonight, I wouldn't blame you. Neither would I. Hey, just got a war. Yes, sir. Dr. Cage, please go east. Dr. Andy wrote something on the back of his donor card. Take what you need and carry on. I know I plan to. They, um, they say he was a wonderful person. Do you ever wonder why some people must die so that others can live? Or why enemies live and innocent die? All the time. Perhaps it's because we're not supposed to know. Never a good reason for death. You don't know that until you die. All I'm saying is, how can you judge something fairly when you don't even know what the rules are? You can't play God, Joe, because you aren't God. This is ridiculous. Ethan Parker should have never had a chance at a heart in the first place. I mean, somebody should have stopped it before he ever got on a waiting list. You too, then. You think he deserved to die? Absolutely. And it's too bad he couldn't have died five times over. Well, he did a terrible thing, that's true. And he only got two years. I mean, it's obscene. No chance that anything good could come out of this? No way. Bad eggs? Throw them all out before they stink everything up. I gotta go to the ladies' room. Speaking of throwing people out... It's taking longer than I thought. Well, this is not war and peace, and I've been on my feet all day. And the chef's been in a bad mood all day. And if you think I'm gonna pull the dinner shift, too, you need to get your halo straightened out. Go on and tell the story, and let's get out of here. Before it's too late. Time 
timing is everything now. Okay. Let's get this over with. Just so you'll know, it's only 25 minutes until the happy hour. We start to set up for the dinner crowd. I hope that won't disturb you. I'm almost finished. So... No substitute. Joe's got to do the surgery. But he doesn't have to do it right. What a terrible thing to say. Are you always so vengeful? This is a very lonely town, you know? You gotta fight for what's yours. The seat on the subway, the next number in line at the deli. I reported the people next door for lifting the classifieds out of my Sunday paper. So if somebody actually took away something I really loved, I'd nail them in a New York minute and never look back. So that's what you believe in, huh? Getting even? Nobody ever did me any favors, Monica. No humans. No angels. Me. That's what I believe in. And don't ask me to believe in anything else unless you've got proof. In the wee small hours of the morning When the whole wide world is fast asleep I'll see what I can do. You lie away. Time was running out for Ethan, and there was and no one else to do the transplant girl. but Joe. And you never even think of counting sheep when your lonely heart has learned its lesson. You'd be happy if only she would call In the wee small hours of the morning That's the time Lost plan? Cross plan Somebody turn that off Yes, Doctor All right, let's go on bypass Okay, starting now Let Rance know we're ready. Yes, Doctor. We're all ready to go. Take care of the point. Okay, so we'll be back up on you. Excuse me. you before. I'm here to see this through. I'm an angel. That is your own life that you're holding in your hands. And you can't save it any more than you can take or save Ethan's life. There's only one physician in this room who can do that. It was he who gave you the talent to save lives. And only he has the right to give a life or take a life. Let him give your life back to you, Joe. Let him help you find mercy for those who fail. I, I don't know how. I'm here to help you. God loves you, Joe. And whether you think he should or not, he loves this man, Ethan. 
He wants this to be a room of life, not death. But he can do nothing unless you get out of the way. Let go of your guilt, Joe, and release this man from his. With Andy's heart, Ethan has a, has a chance to carry on. So do you. Hello. Who will carry on for my children? They're carrying on just fine. You okay, Joe? Let's do it. Pick up. Pick up. Blood temp is normal, doctor. Looking good. Okay. Let's open her up, see if it takes. Here we go. Heart's gonna take over any second. Breath. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. It's taking too long. He's fibrillating. We're gonna fire. Let's go. Paddles. Here we go. Clear? Clear. Charge to 10. Charging? Shock. Clear. Charge to 20. Charge to 20. Shock. Shock. Still fibrillating. Electrolytes okay? Johnny's dead. Venus blood gas? Looking good, yeah. Maybe he's got air down his car in here. No way. Everything went perfectly. The clamps have been off for two minutes, Doctor. All right, just wait a minute. Just wait. The door is open. Drunk driver, he survived? Yes. I don't get it. It wasn't his time. What a waste of a heart. I can't print this. It's some sick fairy tale you made up about real people. Where are you going? 
You told me that when you were finished with your story, I'd believe in angels. Yes, I did. I promised. Yeah, well, the story stinks. You're finished, and I don't believe. Thanks, but I'm out of here. Okay. Thanks. Sure. I'm just glad it was there. You take care of yourself. Now I'm finished. <laughs> 